life and be honest and sincere in that love and let love be without dissimulation upon that which is evil cleave to that which is good but stand be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love in honor what preferring one another have you noticed the people of the world they always prefer themselves they want to be there. They don't want anybody, anybody else to be there. They want to possess. They don't want any other person to possess. They want to have. They don't want any other person to have. They want to be happy. They don't want any other person to be happy. They want to have their way all the time. But it says in honor, preferring one another, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Then it says in verse 13, distributing to the necessity of saints, giving to hospitality. That's love. You know, some people say, yes, I love because spiritually I'm praying for people in my house every time. Come out of the house and show that love and let us see that you can do some good distributing to the necessity of the saints. And look at the needs of the saints and give a helping hand and do something practical, something tangible, something visible that you'll know this is love. And then he tells us, Bless them which do what? Tell me out loud. That's love, that's love, that's love. Look at some people. You know, if you just test on people, don't do it. I just said, if you can't do this because you have to show love every time. If you just pretend and you frown at some people, immediately they will frown also at you. They don't understand how to manifest love to the people that persecute them. If you just don't do this, but if you are to withdraw a benefit from somebody just to test you, I say, I'm withdrawing this and act as he. You're not going to be a kind of joy or happiness to him, and you'll see him becoming sour and bitter. Don't do it, but you know, that's how some people are. They don't understand that it is when the night is dark and when there are no stars in the sky and when everything is bleak and black and terrible, it is that that comes as a test to your love, the love that we profess that we have. And you know, sometimes you find that at home. If, uh, you know, the husband will wake up in the morning and begin to sing and then he's happy. How are you, my wife? And pet everybody. All of a sudden, everything will brighten up. And if for one reason or the other, he doesn't do that the following morning, then the wife will be suspecting. Maybe he has something on the mind. And okay, if he has anything on the mind, I'm going to react to him the same way. You don't do that. Manifest the love. It is what you experience on the inside. You will manifest and express on the outside. Don't let any condition around you, any behavior around you, any kind of demonstration around you change the love within. It says over here that you will bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. That's Christianity. We don't respond or react to people the way they react unto us. And then it says rejoicing with them that rejoice. And you weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one to another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Give me a good amen. amen. Verse 17, does the first sentence, and we all read that together once you go. I'm waiting for you to wake up now, wake up and read it aloud. That's the test of being a Christian. That's the test of having the love of Christ within. That's the test of having real salvation within. Look at the world around you. You know what the world is doing? In fact, even before you do any evil to them, they are watching, they are suspecting you. And they are trying to interpret your action. 
And once the interpreter action to mean you want to do evil to them, they just do evil. They, they have not even known whether you intend to do evil or not. That's the world. When you become a Christian, everything changes. Even if the people is not a supposed evil, even if it's real evil that they have done, it says we compare to no man evil for evil. If you look at the world in which we live, that sentence alone would have cancelled all the wars in the world. Because why do countries go to war against one another? This country feels that that other country has done evil to them. And so they want to retaliate. If they came to this verse, there will be no war in the world anymore. All the assassinations of kings and emperors and presidents. If we come to this verse, there will be no assassination. Why is there assassination? We feel that that king has done evil to this tribe. And this tribe, therefore, would like to assassinate that king. Recompense to no man, evil for evil. If we come to this verse, there will be no divorce in any marriage, in any family in the world anymore. Why do people divorce? That woman has done evil to me. She insulted my mother. She insulted my parents. And she belittled my family. Because of that, I'm going to show her. That's why people divorce. If we come to this, there will be no divorce anymore in any family in the world. And this is what I brought separation of friends. You know, he was a good friend, but he's done evil. And because of that, this person says, no, this is not a person I should have as my friend. This is what brings conflict. And it is because of not looking at the scriptures and not obeying the scriptures. That's why we have all the wars and all the battles and all the assassination and all the divorce and all the separation and all the wickedness and all the oppression against people. But in our lives, we're going to carry out this word. We're going to behave as if the love of God actually filled and saturated our hearts. Recompense to no man. Evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of how many men? All men. And if it be possible, as much as it lies in you, leave how? Tell me out loud. Live peaceably. If you know that if somebody is doing evil to you and you are not recompensing evil to them, eventually they will say, looks like this man is genuinely loving me. They will stop the evil. And that's how you can bring peace in your home. And peace in the church. And peace in the community. If it be possible, as much as it lies in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. You know, some believers, they forget that God can avenge for them. They want to avenge for themselves. They don't want to wait for God. The church goers of these days, I don't want to see the believers because believers are always the same. First century believers, 21st century believers, always the same. But the church goers, the church goers don't want to wait for God to defend them anymore. They say, God, I'll defend myself. Thank you. Don't, don't worry about me. I'll defend myself. That fellow knocks me, I knock him back. That fellow hurts me, I hurt him back. God, don't worry about defending me. I'll do it myself. Don't do that. Don't do that. Then you'll just be a nominal church. Go out, be a real believer. How do real believers behave? Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto us. For it is reaching, vengeance is mine, and I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if an enemy hunger, do watch, feed him. If he thirst, do watch, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head. Be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with Good. We're looking at Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 8. 
owe no man anything but to love one another. Oh no man anything but to do what? To love one another. For he that loveth another has fulfilled the law. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love walketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is what? The fulfilling of the law. And that's what the Lord is telling us in First Thessalonians, First Thessalonians chapter 4. First Thessalonians chapter 4. We're reading from verse 9 and from verse 10. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 9. But as touching brotherly love, ye have ye need not that I write unto you, for ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. Taught of God, taught of God to love one another. When you come to Christ and God begins to teach you, He begins to lead you into practical truths. The truth that affects your life. The truth that a new creature needs to be able to live and demonstrate. That truly, you are a child of God. God never teaches us hatred. If you find somebody manifesting hatred, bitterness, anger, violence, Somebody else has been teaching that individual. Satan is teaching him. And is learning from the enemy. When God teaches us. He teaches us to love. Because God is love. And when he possesses us. And he lives within us. is love will lead us to love one another. Look at that verse 9 again. But as touching brotherly love, ye have not that I write unto ye need not that I write unto you. For ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. Will love one another. I said will love one another. And indeed ye do it towards all the brethren which are in all Macedonia. But we beseech your brethren that she increase more and uh, more will increase in the love of God. Because if we don't, this is the mark, the identifying mark that we are the disciples of Christ. And if that is missing, all else will be useless. First Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 1. Though I speak with the tongue of men and of angels, and have not charity as love, I am become a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. Though I have all the gift of prophecy, and understand all mysteries, and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have no charity that's love, I am nothing. And though I bestow my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burnt, and have not charity profited me nothing. That tells you then how serious the matter is. How necessary. This is a very essential commodity of virtue in the life of a child of God that demonstrates that we are the real children of God. This love we're talking about is valued beyond and above speaking in tongues. This love is valued beyond and above the knowledge and the understanding of all knowledge. This love we're talking about is more, much more important than the gift of prophecy. And it's even more important than the faith to move mountains. And it is more important than just being philanthropic and generous and having your goods to feed the poor. And it tells us the description of such a love. We're looking at verse 4. In verse 4, love 
suffereth long and is kind. It envieth not. It vaunteth not itself. It's not bought up and vaunteth not itself and does not behave itself possibly. Seeketh not her own. The love of Christ within us, expressed as Christ lives within us, will not seek his own advantage, his own gain, his own pleasure to hurt other people. It says, behaves himself not unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Verse 8, charity never faileth. Amen. You know, money will fail one day, but charity never faileth. All the property that people have will fail, but charity never faileth. Whatever gift we have, and whatever possession we have, there's something that possession will not be able to have. And that thing will fail someday. But it's something that never fails. Charity, love, never fails. I pray God will give it to us. Now we'll come to point number three. Exemplifying his love towards him. His manifested love towards us. And we need to manifest the love towards him. Reciprocate. Show him that you love him. How are you going to show that? Because Christ is no more on the earth today. Are you going to reciprocate? Are you going to show the love unto Christ today? He tells us in Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. In Matthew chapter 25. It's telling us from verse 34. In verse 34, then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of the Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was in hunger, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and he visited me. I was in prison, and he, gave, he came unto me. Uh, well, to start with, look up, brothers and sisters. The love we're, we're talking about is not just a smiling love. You know, some people, they just smile all the day through. They never help you. If you're hungry, they never feed you. If you don't have any clothes, they never give you clothes. If you need a helping hand, they never give a helping hand. They just smile. They just smile. That's an empty love. That's a useless love. That's a worthless love. Only smiling and smiling. Do more than that. Jesus said, I was hungry. You gave me meat. I was thirsty. And you gave me drink. I was a stranger. And you took me in. And then I was naked, and you closed me. I was sick, and you visited me. Not just praying. And then we, you know, brother, we're praying for you. Visit them. You know, you've not seen them for a long time. They're sick. You know, but we're busy evangelizing. We're busy, and we're busy with the people outside. And the people who are inside, we don't show love to them. It says, I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison. Sin and uh, you didn't make fun of me that I was imprisoned. It is uh, it serves him right. They're persecuting him and now he's in prison. That's not love. Try to interpret the imprisonment of the saint, of the child of God. It says, and you came to me. Then shall the righteous answer and say, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink, when saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in naked, and clothed thee, or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came to thee, and the king shall answer, and say unto them, here is how we reciprocate unto Christ. 
He has loved us. He has shown love unto us. And we show him love back. See what he said. Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of this, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. It's unto Christ. That's how we show the love back unto him. Exemplifying his love toward him. Toward him. Everything you do for a real child of God. You're doing for Christ. You love him. You help him. You pray for him. You assist him. You support him. You're doing it for Christ. If on the other hand, you hurt him, you injure him, you belittle him, you oppress him, you destroy him, you're doing that to Christ too. That's why Jesus...